प्रेजेंटेड बाय ईबिक्स कैश हर खुशी के लिए काफी है Hello and welcome to the Business Today show. This is our market special. I am Uday Mukherjee with me is my co-host Abha Bakaya and our guest today on the show is a veteran of the market for many many decades, Ramdev Agarwal of Motilal Oswal. Uh, Ramdev, it's good to speak to you again. You know, every investor that we speak to or we hear these days just seems so anxious. Why isn't a correction happening? The market is ahead of itself. The market has gone up so much it will correct and fall uh, in Uh, almost immediately uh, how do you read this kind of anxiety that you're hearing from most investors today how do you address such questions yeah very nice to talk to you then after a long time uh, and uh, you know this question is coming loud and uh, like. everybody is talking about that and nobody knows uh, these corrections they will come and uh, it is that so uh, i'm kind of uh, used to it you know this corrections and uh, Uh, deep corrections also i'm quite used to it and that's part and parcel of life i mean any bull run or uh, markets uh, climbing uh, from any level to any level like in 2003 2008 when it climbed from 5000 to 20000 you know we had all these concerns uh, on the way and uh, uh, stories uh, came out and finally market picked out at 21000 so i think we are in some kind of a, some kind of a climb and uh, how fast it goes how far it goes i mean a lot of things depend but uh, these concerns will always remain uh, i mean they were there very loud when uh, index had fallen by 40% last year and they were same guys who were asking why should we invest this is a crazy market it is down by 40% and now it is up 100% and still they ask the same question so it is very i mean these these things keep happening i think one has to have faith in the stock market one has to be ready for the 10 20% correction and uh, and then uh, the eventual the power of compounding of uh, 15 17% and then on top of it if you are a good manager then maybe you can make another 3% so that's the kind of uh, thinking i have i'm reconciled to uh, eventual corrections and uh, power of compounding both mm. but you've seen so many market cycles ramdev uh, as we sit today do you yeah. see any danger signs flashing uh, which tells you that something is happening in the market which one should be very cautious about any exuberance in terms of participation uh, any bubble like valuations in pockets ipo frenzy are there any signs which are telling you that something bad is going to happen a big accident lies ahead are there any red signals flashing or you think it's this normal caution that you hear about people uh or from people because they haven't seen a correction for a long time yeah see there are two three things happening which are very new to this market one we are coming out of covid this was a historical this is a historical event i mean on the healthcare crisis a lot of things have broken down i think one of the thing which has broken down is logistics global logistics are completely broken down and the cost of logistics for many comp- many stuff global logistic cost have gone higher than the kind of underlying profits or whatever you know if somebody is making 10% profit the logistic cost has gone from 7% to 25% so it has eaten away the entire profit so these are crazy i mean things are breaking down one one after other in many aspects so we don't know uh, you know what could could happen to which company and of course when some companies suffer some companies disproportionately benefit also so the companies which are say inbound the companies which are competing with the uh, what do you call imported material they are much better off today because they don't have that exp- the cheap imports coming into the country so like polymer polymers were being dumped, uh, were coming in india very smoothly at certain price now the logistic cost of the polymers have like gone up by 15 20% so the domestic guys can can increase the prices by that much so you know uh, so the profits for these guys they have changed so there are so many things changing i am quite sure in this quarter result you see some companies suffering big time which are doing very well and some companies will suddenly show huge profits which they were not expected to make profits so a lot of things have gone haywire uh, in this period and then on top of it you have extremely loose monetary policy all over the world coordinated so cost of money is very low despite high inflation or what was the inflation but the cost of money and the inflation has no correlation right now and the quantum of money is literally unlimited 
So these are the very, I mean, I have at least not seen so many, how do you handle so many variables at one time? You know, simultaneously working on, uh, uh, on, on, uh, on the stock prices. So I'm trying to focus as much as possible on each and every company, which I understand, which I, which I like, and, uh, uh, and then go uh, build up your portfolio like that, rather than taking a big call on uh, what market can do uh, in, in very short term. Fair enough. But I, I was quite intrigued to see uh, Zomato in your list uh, of Motila Loswal top 25. That means you have bought into that IPO and that was interesting for me because I always saw you as an old timer kind of an investment uh, uh, analyst who would buy the Marutis and Hero Hondas of the world. Uh, but clearly you have adopted the new age digital kind of technology companies as well. How do you go about valuing them Ramdhar? I want to hear it from an old timer like you. Yeah. So I had uh, exactly as expected by you, I had the struggle and uh, uh, I, it was difficult for me to, uh, I mean, I, I could see the excitement of uh, digital businesses because uh, I read few books and, uh, and then I said, let's, uh, let's look at it very, uh, in a very unemotional way, in the sense that first saying that uh, I don't understand and I can't understand, let's try to understand because uh, digital business have become seriously large in US and China particularly, these two places. And India is the next third place where it is going to be built. So I said, if we remain in uh, uh, what you call denial mode, we'll never learn. So then uh, with, with the help of team, uh, we started looking at uh, in somewhat different manner. And uh, because the accounting of these digital companies are quite, quite funny in the sense that all the growth capex, they are built in the PNL not in the balance sheet. If you build a cement company, your capex is uh, coming in the balance sheet, not in the PNL. Whereas when there, when Zomato or any digital company is building up client base uh, and seriously large client base, that entire expenditure comes in the PNL. And hence that looks optically very, very loss making, but they are actually not loss making. In the sense that uh, uh, if you look at uh, uh, what they do and uh, if you kind of give some kind of if you can remove the growth capex from the PNL, I think they are inherently profitable. Bulk of them are profitable, and that's how I try to. Uh, and then what we do is that uh, okay, these businesses can scale up very rapidly to very large level, uh, and their asset light fundamentally. So the value of these companies can be large potentially, and uh, we have seen actually when the uh, uh, Indian IT happened between ninety five to two thousand, when CNBC had just about started. You know, uh, at that point of time, we made a lot of money uh, uh, because, uh, uh, you know, that time model was very clear in the sense that it was very profitable and it was coming through the PNL. But it was the value migration and the start of a completely new business. And uh, the growth was massive. And we saw from less than 1,000 crores, uh, Infosys climbing 1 lakh crore in 4 to 5 years. So that was a kind of a learning from where we started. And we said that this is the place. This is an opportunity where large business will be built. Which one will be successful? How successful? We have, we don't have that kind of a, uh, you know, uh, what I would say, uh, grip that, okay, this company will become uh, very big. But we know out of 10 companies, two or three of them will become seriously large. And I think in next, uh, uh, say, five, 10 years, even 10, 15% or 20% of the total market cap will come from these companies. So uh, keeping that in mind, I said, let's, let's start this is a simple business of deliveries. We understand the economics and let me, uh, uh, let me try to uh, put some money over here, uh, thinking that it is going to be a portfolio of companies rather than one company. So given that there are plenty of other big listings coming up this year, how does uh, a retail investor and the market is flush with them, Ramdo? You've in fact been uh, uh, making mention of the kind of numbers we've been seeing yourself. How does a retail investor evaluate uh, the kind of risk associated with getting into certain, uh, you know, certain names or stocks at very heightened prices? Uh, for an investor that's very new to the market, uh, what's the best way of going about trying to really understand the kind of risk associated there? I mean. Everybody has to do his work and he has to see his circle of competence and understanding and then put the bet depending on how much he has understood 
how much he can lose what could be the you know downside uh, downside to that and as the valuations become more demanding because the cost of money is low and uh, uh, the mm. flow of the money is too much too much money chasing the uh, the this new issues so clearly finding value finding deep value in them is almost out of question okay completely out of question so i am not a big fan of ipo per se mm. i mean in last 20 25 years i have never bothered too much about the ipos but now completely new type of companies are coming mm. of which alternatives are not there in the listed space yes. and hence we are looking at some of the digital companies which are unique one of the thing uh, about uh, digital companies that every company is a unique company unlike say in it companies 20 it companies were more or less same you know all the i i mean what work uh, tcs does can be done by infosys can be done by mm. wipro but i don't think the digital companies are like that so uh, i think we have to understand individually each and every opportunity are they local are they global what kind of gross margins they have what kind of uh, negative or positive net margin they have and what could be the growth trajectory how convinced we are so keeping all these things in mind uh, i think uh, uh, because if you don't buy early in these in these companies i think if they are successful they will scale up very quickly and then uh, it will be very tough for anybody to intervene into the market and uh, uh, put in the portfolio but at the same time it's a slightly risky game uh, i mean we put 2% 3% and maybe i'll put in 10 12% maybe four five companies and i'm quite sure one or two will disappoint mm. but uh, but we have to learn the game as we go along We started this discussion by talking about disruptions, mm. uh, Ramte. You outlined many industries where there has been serious disruption. One area where you've tracked very closely over the years is autos, and there's a big disruption coming there. Uh, whether it's yeah. two wheelers or four wheelers, electric vehicles is going to become a reality much faster than we might have imagined. How do you go about investing in autos at a time like this when such a serious disruption lies just ahead? yeah so that is a uh, i i think uh, uh to some extent our portfolios have underperformed also because of that in the sense that we were uh, we were holding on to them thinking that this will be one of the best opening trade opening uh, opening up of the economic trade when the uh, economy opens up but what uh, what hit was the you know that this semiconductor problem so suddenly you have the demand but we don't have the supply so again you know uh, uh, the trouble has come twice but my sense is that uh, 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 affordable evs particularly from indian context whether it is a two wheeler or four wheeler it will it is some time away affordable i am saying yes the entry will happen so some startup will happen and uh, uh, but i don't think uh, the uh, existing guys incumbents they are sleeping everybody is having in their uh, uh, labs the new models prototypes are there but uh, the affordability in terms of uh, battery charge uh, battery cost and the range in which it comes and the charging stations i think they are all keeping the mass adoption of uh, ev in india some time away uh, but uh, but yes it's uh, one of the biggest disruptions which are now it is no more lab it is reality so uh, i think uh, Uh, the in- incumbents will also participate, and most likely there won't be Kodak moment for all of them. Uh, and uh, of course, one or two new ones will come, like Teslas of the world. But broadly, the same guys, existing guys, they should be able to come out with a good business plan, bringing EVs in time, uh, so that customers get it. Mm. And what about financials, Ramdeo? I mean, that's the other backbone of the market. But do you see? digital disruption happening in the financial space as well where maybe many of these new apps come up and they take away a lot of the uh, the creamy layer of customers from the banking system uh, do you think we are unable to see today what the digital universe or digital apps can do to the financial system and the banks uh, which have been the darling of investors for so long see so then uh, in in case of bank uh, there are two three things happening one of course what you said but first is that value migration from private public sector to private sector which is very unique to india it is not happening world over so uh, in 95 100% was it with public sector banks and now about 35% 40% is in the private sector and still 60% is public sector which are not uh, uh, which which are in no shape to compete in the digital world maybe one sbi but not uh, the entire pack of it 
so that entire market share is going to come wholesale at very rapid pace to the private sector so that's one disruption which is on right now and now it will finish off in next 5 7 years second is the newer and agile that the fintechs are coming in but fintechs typically they are all about data driven unsecured lending you know unsecured and retail lending they are not for you know corporate and wholesale and uh, collateralized lending you know so because with digital it is very tough to do collateral part of it even the uh, housing finance when you want to go through the entire checks and balances of figuring out whether the underlying collateral is good i think it becomes almost impossible to do it digitally again the digital kind of environment comes so my sense is the banking will go from a uh, complete physical to digital and then digital so the collateral part will remain in digital situation and the unsecured part the complete uh, mass uh, lending that will go to digital part and i think a lot of banks either they will buy the fintechs or they themselves will convert some portion of their own uh, wings into a uh, digital kind of situation so uh, i don't think there is a clear uh, what do you call shift of the conventional banking private sector banking agile digital uh, banks like icici hdfc access and all these guys they are very much on top of their game uh, but uh, bulk of that uh, game is not going to shift to the uh, fintechs in uh, uh, in in any meaningful way but uh, i think they'll expand the market on the at the bottom of the pyramid and on the unsecured side interesting ramdo you've always followed the qglp uh, uh, principle you've coined it in fact so talking about quality growth going forward in the long term uh, share with us where you feel the pockets of opportunity lie in a market like this uh, we've seen some sectors incredibly resilient and uh, of course uh, have have done even better uh, post the pandemic for instance it some sectors that have seen a lot of turbulence like auto going forward where do you see the opportunity yeah so my top bit still remains it hmm. i i think uh, the pandemic has changed a lot of things for it apart from uh, demand for uh, uh, making their processes digital i think uh, uh, work from anywhere uh, that has expanded the supply side opportunity for the companies in the sense that uh, 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 truly a lot of even us corporations are discovering that uh, while people are staying in us they are not calling their own employees into the us headquarters right. so clearly if somebody can work out of la why can't he work for from ludhiana hmm. the guys are same so that relation is of course at corporation level it was there to a large extent but now i am talking to a lot of small businesses four people five people outfits they are shifting their back offices to india hiring two charter accountants three charter accountants uh can you hear me yes 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 yeah so uh, so there is a and right now it is just about the start of the uh, post covid uh, phenomenon my sense is in 3 4 5 years time this will become very big issue in the sense that people who ever competent in india they will get jobs from anywhere and they don't have to move from their homes they have to have a nice uh, internet connection and they can be serving their customers or the bosses Uh, very very uh, seamlessly so i think uh, the expansion of uh, uh, flattening of the world uh, was on but now it has accelerated big time post covid hey ramde always a pleasure hearing you thank you very much for joining in today but it was nice to hear your thoughts after a long time thanks to them nice talking to you thank you sir bye thank you That was our market special and we will be back next Monday with another market guru for you but thanks very much for watching from Abha and myself uh, goodbye and take care